Welcome to this Goyal Crime Cymru Festival event, and welcome to Aberystwyth. Croeso'r digwyddiad Goyal Crime Cymru Festival hwn a chroeso i Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth, the cultural capital of Wales, home to Aberystwyth University and the National Library of Wales, once home to Welsh princes, the Biritz of Wales is the jewel in the crown of Cardigan Bay's stunning coastline and home to hugely successful TV drama Hinterland. And now, the streets that have become familiar to fictional D.I. Matthias's many fans are getting ready to welcome celebrities from the worlds of crime fiction and crime drama because Aberystwyth is home to Wales' first ever international crime fiction event Goyle Crime Cymru Festival. During the early May Bank holiday weekend of 2022, ABBA, as the town is affectionately known, will play host to a multitude of events that will offer something for every fan of crime fiction and drama. Internationally successful authors will entertain and meet readers in historic buildings, Pub quizzes will bring together authors and readers. Writing workshops, meet the agent sessions, and informal readings will help encourage and develop new writing talent. And in sparkling celebration of new Welsh talent, a champagne reception for Crime Cymru's first crime novel competition winners. This will be an Aberbank holiday weekend like no other. So, come for the crime fiction and take Cymru home in your hearts. Rydym yn edrych ymlaen yn fawr iawn at eich croesawu i Aberystwyth ac i geredigion. Good evening um, and welcome to, um, on behalf of Crime Cymru and our festival partners, um, Aberystwyth Town Council, welcome to panel number three of Gural Crime, Crime Cymru Festival Online. And did you have gathered, though I'm half Welsh, I do not speak it. I'm Carol Westron and I'm delighted to welcome you to this event. Um, as you know, we're featuring an independent Belt Welsh bookshop at every panel. And the bookshop for our event is uh, Griffin Books in Penarth. If you'd like to read any of the books by the authors you meet this evening, you can order them from Griffin Books. You can find a click-through link to Griffin Books on the programme page under this event. The panel this evening is focusing on a new venture, Diamond Books, and its first imprint, Diamond Crime. Diamond Books um, came into existence when three authors decided to get together and form a new publishing house. I'm the author of both contemporary and Victorian crime fiction, and I'm about to join Diamond Crime. So that's how I've got to be the moderator. My only chance of um, telling my publishers what to do. Let me introduce um, the Diamond Crime panel. Phil Rowlands is the screenwriter, author, and author and producer. Uh, hi, Phil. <laughs> um, his work in life began with, in civil engineering and progressed to catering, hi. acting, adapting the movement and writing TV dramas, films and novels. He has had two psychological thrillers published and there was a third on the way. So welcome, Phil. Stephen Timmins. Hi. Welcome all. <laughs> Stephen Timmins has been a, an executive producer in ITV a senior producer in the BBC and the managing director of an independent producer. He led his company through a float on the stock market to raise money to launch a European science channel, which, according to him, he then ran really badly. True. Steve has written a trilogy of books that are con a contemporary follow-up to The 39 Steps and feature Richard Hannay's grandson. <laughs> Jeff Dowson, hi, you there? No, Jeff. 
Yeah. Jeff Delson uh, began his career working in the theatre as an actor director. From there, he moved into television. Screen credits include art series, entertainment features, drama documentaries, drama series, and TV films. Turning crime novelist in 2014, he introduced Bristol Private Eye Jack Shepard, and in 2017, American GI Ed Grover in the first of a series set soon after World War II. So, if you're all ready for it, I'm going to start the grilling now. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> what made you decide to get together to create a publishing house? Yeah, well, um, it was probably in late 2019 uh, and we were found ourselves still looking for new publishers. So we decided to explore other possibilities. Uh, and by the time we got into the lockdown world, that very strange time, three or four months later, we had developed the idea as a, as a little madness slept in. Uh, and we began to consider why we should take the next steps. Uh, and there were positives, you know, we've, we're friends and collaborators and we've known each other for years uh, and have had many adventures in, in the media world. <laughs> Um, we're all uh, storytellers, we're all crime writers and published authors, and we're passionate about crime fiction, both writing it and reading. And we love working with writers, uh, and we have done many times developing structure, story, character, uh, and We've also edited and produced books, plays, and scripts. But I think one of the most important things is that we, as writers, we have been through the publishing process and we, we know um, and understand how tricky it can be getting from that first draft through to the final delivery and, and onto the marketplace. Uh, and also, you know, how important it is uh, to have trust, support, and care, and focus from a publisher. We are, as writers and publishers, all collaborators. So, you know, after many months of discussion, argument, agreement, uh, <laughs> research, <laughs> deep dives into the digital and technological worlds of e-publishing, and several tantrums. By Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to set up Crime, uh, Diamond Crime, uh, as a platform for new and existing crime writers, including ourselves, um, and also as a, as, as a new and another home for, for readers to experience and explore new crime writers and new voices. There are many um, brilliant writers out there who, um, who can't find a publisher or can't even be read. So we want to try and change that. Uh, and this is simply an opportunity. Thank you very much, Phil. Wow. <laughs> well done. Yes, very exciting answer there. I mean, you'll, you'll find people banging your doors down tomorrow, guys. <clears throat> Jeff, yeah. why Diamond Books? Who thought uh, the name? What's it trying to convey? Well, because I, because like Phil said, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a crime writer and a crime reader. I've, be, I've been a passionate follower of crime since I read The Big Sleep when I was, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 or 11. And I saw Humphrey Bogart in the movie and I thought, oh, well, that's, that's my line of work. Um, took a long time to get where we are now. But I thought the word crime, because I just thought, Let's have a crime publisher. Let's call it something crime. And uh, I thought something crime, something crime. Two syllables crime, two syllables crime. Now I know Diamond's got three syllables, actually. But um, <laughs> I thought of midnight crime, late night crime, uh, whatever. And, and Diamond arrived. And, cause I, and then I thought, well, Diamond, that's good because diamonds are hard, diamonds are tough. You can't cut them, you can't break them, you can't, you know. If you've got a hero who's like that, well, that's quite interesting. And that was it, really. Diamond, so it became Diamond Crime. But 
we then got together and said, well, shouldn't we be diamond books? Because crime is an imprint. So that's what we are, diamond books and diamond crime is our first imprint. And that's true. A diamond has many facets as well, doesn't it, Jeff? So it does, there it you does go. indeed. It does indeed. Yeah. And and, and our and our and our um our graphic designer, Andy, has done us a rather nice logo with lots of facets, which uh, which is which is quite beautiful to look at. Yes, yep. Yeah. Um, Phil, again. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you, you chose the order of these. It was questions. a quick it was a quick break. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't think of anything more to say. I'll, I'll you know, I'll um <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell lies about you if you like, and you know, just <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have the stories later. <laughs> okay. Um, Phil, what Phil, what skills do you bring each bring to the publishing house, and how do they complement each other? Well, again, I I think you know, together with what I've already said, um, and it goes back to us all collaborating over many years, and um, you know, the vast rafts of of diverse projects that we all got involved in, uh, you know, from concept to development, to production, to broadcast or to the marketplace. Um, and I think the basic skills that, that all that had uh, and all those do are, are transferable to, to publishing. Yes. So, so um, do, you, do you each take on a different role within the publishing house or are you all sort of, trying and everything as it were that you know all these well I, th I think there will be a bit of mixing and matching but um you know in 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 a snapshot um i would say that that steve is creative and commercial uh jeff is rock solid in story and sense and i well i started writing very early and when i was 12 i i published a community news sheet with the advertising banner uh, on the heading of cook the butcher for your Sunday joint. <laughs> so obviously my skill is punctuation. <laughs> and probably grammar as well. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think there's a story in that alone. You could, um, but uh, um, so when, when all the, and then people start flooding in all the authors who want to be with Diamond, Diamond Crime at the moment, flood in. Are you all going to read the books or is one of you going to read them and make a decision? Um, well, we've got that sorted out at the moment, if I can just yeah. interject. We're yeah. Basically, one of us will uh, do the first read and then if, if we, we like it, then we'll share that. So by, yeah, by that's, the time... That's, that's, what, uh, that's what I sort of assumed, yeah. yeah. Yes, but... Um, Right, so Steve, your turn. You can... <laughs> Steve, yes. you know, as authors, what would you want of a publishing house? You've been authors, you've been published. So, Steve, what's... Well, uh... I mean, obviously, <laughs> we're going to say this, but we want honesty, transparency, care, and a lot of effort. Um, and we want the publisher to help build our, our readership because I mean as Phil said you've got to remember our backgrounds are all in TV and film so we're used to working in a group and cooperating and it takes an awful lot of people working together and trusting each other to get a good program or a film made and um, actually I was going to quote something I read a paragraph in an article in the last London Review of Books on how medieval literature was created as a kind of group activity and it um contrasted it with the position of the modern author rather well and I'm going to press it a bit because it said uh, writing is not now considered a collective exercise the romantic myth of the lone genius persists the black and white author photo on the book is this myth's icon but what's missing from this picture is among other things the friends who made recommendations and offered diplomatic feedback on the drafts it's the editor who asked the right pointed question who gave direction on structure and there are many people who contribute to the substance of a work beyond the individual who sits at the desk. So that's really why you know, we th feel that we're part of this process and we would like the, we share all our different skills at work, such as they are, with, with our authors and that will get the book published and we will continue to work together before, during and after. Uh, but, but after, but also um, speaking now as a very new publisher, I would really, really like our authors to have patience with us. 
In, in what way? <laughs> Say I as, as your author. Yes, of no, course. No, 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 yes, you're, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I just, uh, this is not completely off script, but I think um, I'm very passionate that if people, I know it's not all people like to work that way, but I belong to um, local groups that I find absolutely invaluable for feedback. And, you know, groups that hold manuscript um, um, evenings and... Um, generally um, and we work together we have great time together um, and I think that perhaps encouraging authors you know that they should share their work before it goes out to the publisher because it yeah. helps them to assess when they've um, when they need um, to alter things as everyone does and I mean I know that when I've sent you um, one of mine and you said um uh, please, could we have a new a start new start to it with a different um, protagonist starting? And I thought, can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. But I think if I hadn't had so much experience of great groups, I wouldn't have been quite so ready to you know accept yeah, it. You know. Yeah. So so that, that's just the side. But it is part of the writer's life that the, you can cooperate with others and enjoy things well that's anyway. jeff who wanted the change by the way carol not, not phil and i didn't want any change no it wasn't me it was phil it's okay i've written it it's fine you accepted <laughs> the extra thousand words in the manuscript it, it doesn't bother me <laughs> and i think actually it works very well so that's the which is the important thing oh, right can i just say i was i was just trying to think while we were talking there about who it was who first laid the seed for this. Um, and none of us want to take the blame, but I want to say here and now that I want to point the finger at Jeff. Yeah. yeah. He was the one who opened the Pandora's box. Yeah, well, I, I did, I, I, before I talked to these two chaps, um, I, I spoke at long length to my wife who looked at me amazed <laughs> and, then, and then said, no, it's not a bad idea. I said, what do you mean it's not a bad idea? It's, it, it's either a bad idea or it's a good idea. What's, what is really not a bad idea mean? So we had a bit of debate about that. And then I rang um, and, and I emailed an, an old agent of mine um, and she said, you do it terribly well, she said. Uh, so I suppose I then talked to the other two. I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I... happened. I mean, I, I, I thought, who, who else can I inflict this stupid idea on? They've got to be, they've got to be people who either who, who have known, known me a long time and who are very tolerant and, and very understanding and also very clever. Oh. And <laughs> I've, I only know two people like that. That's those two. So um, here we are. Well, we I hope you appreciated that best butter, you two. <laughs> so. uh, we nearly called the company Blame Jeff, but we thought that wouldn't work too well. Oh, I think, I think that would make a, a brilliant. <laughs> that can yeah, be the comedy Blame Jeff Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'd better, um, let's see. Um, Jeff, it's a yes. turn now. What forms of publishing you're starting with? Well, I know you're starting with. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I I, 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 I like my my background in reading is really kind of it's private eyes. I mean, I was reading um, Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler from the beginning, and Eric Ambler, and uh, um, and a whole bunch of um, people like that, and so I kind of got hooked on. I got hooked on private eyes, not necessarily, not necessarily mad lunatic ones. I mean, you know, um, <laughs> if you look, if you talk about it, if you look at a list of private eyes, they're damaged, they're drunk, they're, uh, they're divorced, they're, uh, they're, they're injured, they've got one leg, um, all this sort of stuff. And um, the, I just got interested in the process of what it was like being, a, not necessarily a loner, because my, pri my private eyes got a, he's got a daughter, he's got a potential son-in-law, um, accountant who lives next door to him and it's, it's a team effort so but so that was my first thing I mean I like loner detectives I like private detectives but I don't want them too too diseased and too ill and too and too paranoid and too drunk um I do understand though that that, that there's lots of other stuff um that we need to be considering we need to be considering the well the sort of stuff that that, that you write Carol um and 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 and, and Steve writes, Steve writes very quickly and he writes very sharply. Um, and I have to tell him off every now and again because he, like, he writes a lot too. Um, but he writes, he, 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 he writes um, 
in a situation where he has a family of characters who support his lead. His lead character in the John Hannay uh, books, of course, is, works outside the law. Um, Phil's books, again, um, are about people who work outside the law. We do not yet have a cop series. Yeah. Oh, well. But if it works out, I've got a couple, as you know, because I've been an indie <laughs> author for several years. So we'll have to see Yay. how we get these um, first two, um, the amateur, well, both amateur detective ones that I've... Uh, hey, uh, we, we, do, we do like the idea. I mean, it's, it's, we know that the, the, the way to sell books is to find yourself a, a diamond, hard, diamondly successful hero or heroine. Or we can call him, we can call that a hero who actually can survive 10, 15, 20 books and who can develop through that time yeah. um, and develop a readership and get to a point where you're, you're not having to go back down to book three or four and five and see how you explain this intro then. Did you do anything better? Um, so we know that that's a, that, that's a major success. Um, Phil's two books at the moment are standalone, but he is developing characters into, in, into series. So, you know, we're looking for that kind of thing as well. Steve's, is, I mean, Steve's first three books are three parts of a serial. Yes. Well, yeah, they're serial. Certainly the, uh, the second one is a serial because I've just, I just got to the end of that and thought, seriously, have, has something dropped off the end? <laughs> or is it really <laughs> the end of that cliffhanger? And I thought, thank you, Steve. <laughs> But uh, um, so, yes, I mean, basically, you're starting with crime because that's what you know. And once yeah. that's good, rock solid. That's what that's what we know. And that's what we like. And hopefully we can we, we can get together a bunch of people who actually want to work with us because that's what we know. That's what we well, know. well, crime, as you just said, covers many, many mm. uh, parts of this uh, subgenres within the crime subgenre of um, yeah. the cozy, you know, the comedy. Uh, um, the, um, to the police procedural, so yes, got yeah, they all have a fantastic place, don't they? I mean, it's you know, they, they, there's their readership for all of those books, and uh, yeah. you know, yes, and uh, I mean, the great thing about crime is that, 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 that it's 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 a genre which embraces vast amounts of stuff. I mean, it, it, it it's not just about good guys and bad guys. It's about it's about how people work. It's about how people think. How people live together. It's about it's about big stuff. Um, even if you're talking about a small, a small um, group of people um, in America, I mean, because the other thing that I, that I, I grew up on were westerns, and you know, westerns are stories, stories of great morality. You know, there's the good guy and there's the bad guy, but it's also about life and death, and it's about relationships. And crime, crime embraces is a genre which embraces every other genre, yeah. um, and that's why it's so fascinating. Yes, I, oh, I, I don't think you're going to get any disagreements on this panel because we all write crime and we all read crime and love it. So, um, but right, uh, Steve, let's get back to you. Um, what um, other professionals are you employing in order to produce great quality books? Um, we've just about collected our core team now, and it obviously includes the obvious functions, proofreading, uh, typesetting, cover design, website design and management and accountancy. Um, we have someone we want to be our executive editor who will make sure that we retain a certain style and standard and who will chair the editorial board. Um, and I suppose the most important person initially is going to be the social media publicist person because once we've ironed out all the teething problems this is the person who will do more than the rest of us to help the company grow quickly. Yes. Well, that's certainly very reassuring to me as a, as a long term yeah. indie author, because the one thing I couldn't do as well as a small publisher was publicize my books. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm pretty hopeless at that yeah, promotion. Really yeah. And, uh, and I don't want to spend my time promoting when I've got books to write and other stuff to do. So um, so that, to me, is uh, obviously the big sell of, of it. Um, yeah, I mean, the PR is a twenty-four hour job, and, and is, you, yes. you, you can't actually you can't actually write books and rewrite books and edit books and get them right and and then sell them and then and then and then just worry about how the hell it's all going to happen because you've got to get on with the next book and you've got to invite the next person into in, 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 into your circle. Yeah, I, mean, oh, yes. I, I, I have to confess that over the years with the companies I've run, we've had PR people and. 
they've not been up to it and it's really difficult I think we found now the person who is a very old colleague and I think that he's the right person to, to do this because he's good on social media but he doesn't just bang out tweets and um, such like he's, he's just a, I think he's the right person for us that's that's excellent news I'm, I'm delighted to hear that one but uh, I certainly know that Rachel Abbott who's a very well known indie author but she was a businesswoman first said I think it took a, a year certainly more than six months of solid 20 hour a day work just on the business side before she even set up her company. Mind you, she sells in the hundreds of thousands now. And uh, <laughs> you know, so she says, why would I want to go to a publisher? Why would I want an yeah. agent? I, I've got all the profits now, yeah. but yeah. she had the, both the skills and that determination yeah. to do it. I've, I've got too much. I want to live a life as well. Thank yeah. you. But, you know, there's a lot of respect for people who do that because it's, yeah. it is, it's, an, it's incredible. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was certainly not dissing her. Envy, maybe, but no, I don't envy her because I, I like what I've got and what I do. <laughs> but uh, but certainly it was a very, you know, awful thought that she was there saying um, that it would take, you know, sort of six months of 20 hour days to actually put together the business side to um, become a bestseller that way. And uh, there aren't many Indies who got that sort of commitment to the business. Most businesses want to write. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, I better move on, hadn't I? Because otherwise the, the questions are probably piling up up there. Um, uh, this one's um, from, for Jeff. Um, what other activities <laughs> is Diamond Books involved with? You've mentioned something about various education activities. Yeah, well, uh, I, did a, I did a library gig a couple of years back mm -hmm. um, in Bristol. Um, which is which is which is where I live, where Steve lives, which is just across the across the across the water. Um, and Wales is where I live. And Wales <laughs> is where he lives. Yeah, and um, I, I did this a library gig, and uh, and it was with a bunch of people from from one of the universities in Bristol, um, head of English, um, chap working there who was working as an independent screenwriter and had been working with with the students. And I've done a lot of uh, script workshops with students in my day. Um, and we, I, I mentioned it to the other guys, and we, and we talked about what we should also be doing. It's a kind of, I don't know, kind of an outreach program, if you like, well, that's a bit pompous. But, but we'd, like to, we'd like to work, um, as I've done in schools and, and colleges, with writers, people who want to write, uh, kids who want to write, students who want to write, students who are on courses who, who need a bit more of a kick up the bum than, 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 than you know, they think they're getting. And, um, and so we're trying to, we're, we're going to talk to um, a couple of universities about, and uh, school contacts we've got, we're going to talk to a couple of universities as well about asking them to give us a chance to work with their students, to actually invite their students to, to, to send us stuff to read. To, I, I'm, I'm, I am actually mentoring a, a student at Hull at the moment, um, um, because I know he's, because I know he's auntie, um, but, but, <laughs> but but he's he's a, he's a, he's a clever lad but he's missing things um and he's missing things because right now the universities don't know where they you know which direction they're pointing in and they can, they're not catching up with what the students want um so if we can help out with that and at the same time encourage kids to write i mean it's great so that's the kind of thing um, i mean i mean phil's got ideas about other things but that's the, that was the thing that came up i put you on the spot there phil and <laughs> i am you. That but trip? that's the thing that came up first for me because I thought, because I do enjoy um, talking and working with people who say, why do we write this way? How do we construct this? Why is that work and that one doesn't work? Those kind of things that we have to think of all day. And it's a great way of working what's left of your wits as well, because you, <laughs> you get out away from the word processor and you actually put those things into practice with other people. So that's, I mean, that's, and that's really kind of important. Well, yeah, yeah, and working with with sort of children and young people is, is fantastic because, you know, they they often show you where you've gone wrong as well, because there's there's this directness there. Um, and, oh yes, because if you ask if you ask him if you ask if you ask someone for the truth, they'll, they'll give it to you, which is great. <laughs> you also got to remember the um, the um, older people as well, because I. Um, I spent most of my working life um, 
teaching and um i um worked i've worked a long while with the disabled but um yeah. now that's now the government decided that disabled could stop writing stories and play bingo instead because <laughs> it's cost less money um but i'm uh, I still work with community classes, um, and they're not all exclusively older people, but because it's older people who actually have the chance to work, to do a class in the day, they yeah. are mainly people of my own generation or, or older. Um, and some of them find it so exciting, and people have written books um, just from starting a um, once a fortnight class. So they're, they're also worth <laughs> cultivating. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the potential is there for, for a lot of stuff you know and, and and also your first novel stuff and you know because it's that's why we're doing it really yeah yeah I, i've done a series of gigs with bristol library with with people who are readers <clears throat> and and, and don't, don't necessarily want to be potential writers but they are readers and they're of all sorts of uh, ages colors and creeds and it's that's interesting because they're not they're, they're, they're it's a, it's a it's a things grow out of that where people suddenly think, oh yeah, I've got that, and that's that, that's that's marvelous. Yeah, oh, yes. As I said, it's a it's very life enhancing. That's that's pompous mm. as well. I know, but yes, no, it yes. <laughs> but it is. It it does make a difference to people, and it um, you <clears> know, <throat> um, uh, you know, sort of uh, yes, it makes a, a lot of difference. As I said. Um, uh, I had a wonderful, I think I've told you this, Jeff, wonderful chap who'd had a stroke um, when I was working in a disabled centre. And he turned to me and he said, this is wonderful. I'm having more fun in my imagination now than, I can, you know, than I've had in real life. In fact, and then he said, in fact, I'm having more fun than I've ever had in real life. And I said, I don't <laughs> want to know what you're thinking. Thank you. I, well, I met, I met, I met a, there was a guy who died a few years ago of cancer who was a husband, a very close friend of ours. And he, he was, at the end, he, was, he wasn't very, he wasn't just strong enough, he's hardly strong enough to pick up a book. But he read, he started reading the Jack Shepard stories. And he found, he found that, he, found, if, he actually said, he rang me up one day when he was on, having a good day and he said, I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm not asking any questions. Of it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having to work hard. It, it, it's a style I like. And he said, thank you. And I thought, well, hell, if it only sells two more copies, I've done something with that book. Yeah. And he, he died. He died a few months later, having read all three that were um, that were out there. Yeah. But, uh, right, we better better move on before we stop patting ourselves too much on the back about us as great educationalists. Yeah, of course, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, so, Phil, this is a tricky one, and you may not know the answer. You can say, um, when do you anticipate opening your list for applications? And what are you looking for in the novels you wish to publish? Because there's, there's a hundred old people out there all saying, I've got a novel for you. Well, that's a nice, easy question. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think we, myself. I, that's why we gave I, it to him. We passed it on to him. Yeah, I thought you had. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it was somebody else in here, I'd pass it on to them as well. <laughs> uh, I, th I think the thing is that we, we're not quite ready yet to, to receive... Um, manuscripts so it'll be soon very soon um and if people could just check on the website um and you know as soon as, soon as we're ready and as soon as we got things in place uh we'll we'll start taking the stuff in yeah but the website uh, is now live oh, right. oh. yeah the, the website is now live as from today isn't it oh brilliant yeah, yeah. That later, as I said, I've been out all day, so I haven't had a chance. Yeah, possibly ought to explain at this point that the reason that you've got this one author who isn't one of your, as in the publisher as well, me, in other words, is because I've known Jeff for a long while. He's known my work, but I did then have to submit it to the other guys to make sure that they approved of it as well, um, because otherwise they're saying, how come she's jumped in on the thing? Yeah. I mean, we, we were slightly embarrassed in the fact that we're three middle-aged um, um, white blokes. Um, <laughs> Elderly woman. <laughs> who are the, who are these guys who are running this thing? Why are they being so bloody pompous? So we we we, we tried to. Um, I mean, I talked to Carol 
some while ago when, when we first came up with this idea, when we met well, at well, it was, uh, it Crime was, Festival, the Crime Festival in Bristol, it was wasn't it? Crime Fest, um, the last one before lockdown. Yeah, actually. and we talked about it then, and I said, "What did she think?" And she gave me the benefit of her wisdom. She's um, and um, and then when, if if you look very carefully at the website text, you'll you'll find Carol mentioned there. Um, only not as herself, but you'll understand with the brilliance of Steve, who wrote the opening page. Yeah, but uh, I just thought we'd better explain what I'm doing. No, there absolutely right. The, yeah. um, other people, when other people are queuing up to watch, checking your website every day to see when. Can, you're I, can I just say something about you know the the submissions that you know for people. Um, tagging on to what you were saying about other people reading books that you are writing and and you talking about them, workshopping them and stuff like that. I think it's really important that before you send something in that you're happy that it's at the state that you want it to be read properly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that, that was all I wanted to say yeah, about that. I really. know I know this will all be on the website when it um, when you start to open for submissions, but would you, for most people, be asking for the first three chapters and a synopsis or would you ask for the... It's, it is on it is on the contact page what we're asking for oh, so. right, fine. I have, yeah, I said I haven't whole, got to it yet yeah so. we are saying the whole book so um fair good. enough well I feel that with, if it's unknown authors you need to check that they've got the whole book yes. for you yeah. yeah of course but uh but certainly I found that there's a very good author who's probably listening to us at the moment who um, went to a thing called Dunford um, novelist group which only meets once a year um in um in uh, um, Bournemouth, um, but we spend a whole weekend grilling each other about first, usually first chapters, and we are not gentle, I tell you. <laughs> um, and uh, he said that made all the difference to his confidence and because he knew what to do with his book then to submit it to people and, um, and submitted it. I'm, to I'm sitting here anticipating this Wales question. Hmm? I've forgotten about the Wales question. Thank you. Right, let's go for one of the Wales questions. Right, well, I'll start with me. I'm half Welsh, so I knew Dowless and, um, and Merthyr Tidville, which is where my father was brought up, though I'm a Londoner, as anyone who listens to me can see. Um, and I still love to go back there and to remember those little terraced houses. And uh, that's, that's my fond memory of... Um, of Merthyr in one of the grimiest places. Um, and my least fond memory, um, well, though my proudest perhaps, is being dragged up Snowdon, walking all the way with my husband, who doesn't deserve to be my husband after doing that to me, <laughs> which for a London girl with asthma was not a treat. <laughs> but I made it once up Snowdon. <laughs> But uh, um, but what Jeff? What do you like about? Well, well, I, I live in Bristol. I've lived there for forty two years, and so Wales is just next door. And I worked over twenty five course of twenty five years. I worked a lot for HTV, the other Welsh broadcaster, the independent broadcaster, in the studios of Honcana and Culverhouse Cross, and in Mould, where they had in those days. And I filmed locations all over the country. I got I got a list of them: London, No Rough. Ruthin, Port Marion, Fishcod, the Pembroke Coasts, once in the Mumbles, the Breckens, the Borders, Ryada and Bala with Phil, at the source of the River Seven in Plinlimon, in Newtown, Lanidois, in Barmouth, Carnarvon, and on top of Snowdon. Um, uh, and I kind of, I kind of consider, I, I, th I like to consider myself the most travelled Englishman in Wales, <laughs> and, and I've enjoyed, and I've enjoyed it immensely. Except, and this is what I wanted to say, except for the unpleasantness in Aberystwyth. Now, this was an incident in 1980, after which I swore I'd never return to the then Principality. I was filming with HTV in, 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 in Aberystwyth. Um, and I was parked on a single yellow line, rushing, a friend of mine was rushing into a hardware shop to get some batteries for the, um, for the uh, sound recordist's recorder. And a traffic warden loomed into the front windscreen. And he shouted at me and I wound down the window and he stuck his head in and he said, get out of town. We don't want your sort, you. <laughs> and I was evicted, thrown out of Aberystwyth by a traffic warden. Good man. And I, yeah, and I, swore, I swore I'd never go back. But since then, I've been back four or five times. The last mm -hmm. time was in 2003 with Phil. We, we were filming a series which Phil wrote called 
you know, carousels and candy floss about about them, about uh, fairground families, and and we we opened by filming in Aberystwyth in December, and we got this big top shot of the place from up on the hill by the Welsh Library, and it was raining fit the bust. It was blowing an eighty mile an hour wind, and the sea was coming into the prom, going up in the air and smashing against the windows of the houses, and we. Uh, there were five of us in, in the crew and four of us were holding, holding, holding the, uh, the tripod down. I was kneeling next to, Phil, next to Phil in this storm and we looked at each other and wondered where, where our careers had come to. But the great thing was, it was wonderful. It was freezing cold, but we were getting award-winning TV pictures and, and I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> well, I hope you'll be back at Abyss with for the um, festival next year when it's live. <laughs> yeah. I'm comfortably miles away from Abyss at the moment, but um, <laughs> but there we are. Anyway, Phil, you're you're um, a, um, a Welshman, or at least a Welsh dweller. So, um, what's oh, your Welsh favorite? man, please? Hmm? I'm a Welsh man. Yes, Welsh man. Um, yeah, I... And I well, I can tell you what I did today in Wales. <laughs> but I suppose, actually, one of my favourite places in, in of all is 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 Newgale, um, in Pembrokeshire, and w when I was a kid, we used to go there every year for for the whole summer, um, and we 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 go down the day after school finished, and we come back the day before school end be started again, and it was magnificent. And walking across the the cliffs to um, to Solvern and St David's. You passed by. They were two of my favourite bits, and when I when I go back there now, it's just still as magical. Is the little Kumar Bay, which um, we used to sit and watch the seals in, uh, and it's those memories never go. Uh, and it's 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 changed a little bit now, but it it was it's it's still you know one of my favourite memories. There are lots lots of places in Wales. Anyway, well, yeah, that's that's very lyrical. I mean, I I do love Wales, and I actually very. I mean, it's the only country I think I would willingly move to, other than um, being you know sort of an English one living right in the centre of England. <laughs> but um, uh, but I I would Wales is the only place where other place that I feel at home. So I understand. Well, Steve, that's... Steve. Oh, well, my, my brother-in-law lives in um, Aberkirkie near um, uh, Kenarth, um, you know, which is kind of Pembrokeshire, Carmarth and Ceredigion borders. And it's, uh, well, I know that Alice won't, won't, obviously knows about it. It's, it's just such a beautiful part of the world. We've been going there twice a year for years and years and years. And my wife's family comes from Tonipandi. They were miners and they moved across to Bristol to the Kingswood, uh, uh, the North Somerset um, pits and the South Gloucestershire pits. And um, but no, I just love going there. I agree with you. Um, I think, Carol, I, I would move there. Yeah, yeah. If they'd let me in. <laughs> well, yeah. Just I mean, I, I might have to that way. <laughs> do that. But, uh, anyway, one last question, and then we'll be going to the audience question. We've got two minutes. Steve? Yes. Um, you're starting by publishing crime novels, oh, right, yeah. but you intend to expand into publishing other genres, I know. <laughs> So, which one do you anticipate? Well, well, we do have a problem here. Did you you probably notice Jeff's passion, and every about crime, uh, and committing it most of the time. <laughs> when we've ever discussed it, every time we think, what should we do? Jeff ends up asking, "Where's the bloody murder?" or something like that. <laughs> and now I uh, know well, not in that accent. I hate that accent. Well, it was near enough. But in, in, uh, never. Lizzie on the Mystery People website, she quotes P.D. James as saying, what the detective story is about is not murder, but the restoration of order. You try telling that to Jeff. <laughs> anyway, I think for the time being then that we're, it'll all be crime based, whether it's future crime, which is really interesting, historical crime, which is very much yours or Alice's field, romance crime or saga crime. Just let Jeff have his murder somewhere in the book and it'll keep him quiet. Oh, if, if I, Jeff, that's a calumny. It's a calumny. I don't, I, don't, I don't say those if, things at all. If Jeff is quiet, then all will be happiness and harmony in the little world. Of so, so, so romance with a murder in it. And, oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And, um, <laughs> well, when, I, it, when it, I've learned this now, when in doubt, say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I think that that's, uh, I think that there will be some other um, yeah. 
things that slip in, but I think you'll have to obviously um, just not tell Jeff about them at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that will solve it. Now, I was going to ask if Amy's here because she's got the questions for us. Amy, you there? I am. Yay. I am here. Hi, everybody. Um, just to let you know, we have viewers from, from both sides of the Atlantic today. Um, and everyone seems to be very much enjoying the panel. I do have a couple of questions for you. And I think the, the questions are, are for all of you. So I'm, I'm sure everyone would appreciate an answer from all of you. So the first question we have is from Philip Gwyn jones who asks, what would you say to a 25-year-old writer who is feeling discouraged by a lack of success and thinking about giving up? He would also like to add that he is not the 25-year-old writer in question. Um, the thing is that the thing about writing is that you've got to write every day. Even if what you're writing is nonsense, you have to, you have to sit down and you have to fill the page. Um, and it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter, but initially the, 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 although, although the intention is to write something that someone will find mm -hmm. fascinating that will turn pages and somebody will buy in print. You just have to have the confidence in writing even the smallest piece, with it, which has a beginning and a middle and an end, you know, because every scene has a beginning and a middle, every sentence has a beginning, a middle and an end. And if you can write a couple of pages of something which has a beginning and a middle and an end, and then you can look at that and have the courage to say, you know, that doesn't work, but I know how it can work and do it again. And, and you need to do it again. Um, oh. Uh, can I? Sorry. Just, yeah, go on, Steve. We've. Um, I mean, you, you know, if, if you work in television or film, you get discouraged every day. And I, I gave up trying to produce stuff for uh, S4C and Channel Four when you, I met another thirteen-year-old commissioning editor who knew more about the world than we, 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 any of us did. So you've just got to keep overcoming it and overcoming it. And it's so, it is so dispiriting. I know exactly how this person feels. But you've just got to keep going. As Jeff says, you just write every day, and sooner or later. If you've got the talent, sure the person has, you will actually break through. It just never feels like it until suddenly it happens. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. And I, I, I think it's about trying to find that courage in yourself as well to keep going and, and, and to keep writing and believe in yourself. Because, you know, you get that at every stage of writing, you know, I, I mean, you... you you look at what you've, you've written and you think that that is absolute rubbish. Sometimes it is, <laughs> but you know that you're not going to write brilliant stuff all the time, but you will get there. And, and everything is a story, you know, and it's just keep going. Yeah. And have the courage. This is the difficult bit. Have the courage on day two to read back what you wrote on day one. You have and, to. and then try and smile about it or try and admit that there's something wrong with it and try and fix it. Yes, it's true what you guys have said, as speaking as a creative writing teacher of years, that the it's not always the most talented writers that get there. It's the ones who keep on, keep on, stubborn and sticking with it and going on and on and on, you yeah. know. And, uh, and if you love it, though, if it's what you want to do, then keep doing it and just hope that one day you'll get there. There's so many, apart from wonderful new publishers coming up all the time there's so many options in, in the indie market now that it's much much easier to be a published writer than it was but you have to make sure the quality is there and, uh, so keep on that's the all you can say and, yeah. um, and thank you guys so i suppose the main the main message there is 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 keep on keeping on then <laughs> yeah. yeah i think so yeah, and okay. just, um, just you will believe in yourself. You will get there. And and do you, I suppose, as 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 writers and as authors and as as publishers now, do you also have those moments of self doubt when you're writing? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every other um, day. And and the the, the the worst moments, I guess, when when you, you you're thirty thousand words into this thing. What's that? And that's you know, say 100 pages, and you suddenly realise that actually it's not going well at all. And, and, you, and, and you think, 
you see, when you're writing a TV script, it's easy because you write five minutes uh, and that's five minutes of TV running time. You write five minutes a day. You can write half a script in, in a week. And then if, if, if you look at it and say, oh, that doesn't work, it doesn't matter. You've lost a few days. You can go back. You can rethink. You can start again. But when you've got a third of a novel written in front of you and you're getting to the point where you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm not so sure this is working. Um, that's the big crisis. It happens to all of us. Yeah, and I think I think usually as well you've got moments which you think is that you look at it and you go, do you know that 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 chapter that scene is absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm I can't believe I've read. Oops, he's freezing. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, as well. I mean it's in the way. Are you back, Phil? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, and I think if, there are times. Oh yes, I'm oh, sorry. Did I disappear? You disappeared, Phil. Yes, you're I mean, just, just gladly, Phil. Oh. Sorry, have I gone? No, am I back you're now? Back. You're back. Go back. Go with us. I'm back now. <laughs> I think it's the internet <laughs> connection, my end. <laughs> well, we hope it's that rather than a little absence on your part. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, I keep getting this flashing up saying your internet uh, connection is. Yeah. Something. Yeah. But, anyway. but I, I, do, I do remember actually once when I was in a radio play um, that the producer said to me, and I'd done a very difficult accent in it, and he said to me, do you know, that was absolutely inexorable. <laughs> and I said, was it really? God, thank you so much. I was 24. <laughs> and he said, have you, have, do you know what that word means? And I said, no. And he said, go and look it up. <laughs> so I did. And I had to go back in the next day. <laughs> but that's okay. You get used to that. What about you, Stephen? No, I, I just, you can write a chapter. In fact, you get near the end of a book, two thirds in, and you think, you, you sit down and read it all. You think, damn, this is good. And then... You go away for a day or maybe two days, you come back and you think, oh God, it's absolute crap. And you, you, it's that kind of, you know, I'm not saying I'm kind of <laughs> up and down like a yo-yo all the time, but you certainly get that way sometimes. And only when, I mean, like Carol describes it, is you, what's the expression you use, Carol, about not knowing where you're going when you're, when you're writing? Because I, I don't plot at all, so no, I, I, I write into the dark. That's basically. the word, yes, likewise. And when you're doing that, you just have to hope that the dark ends up finding a bit of light. Yeah, my, 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 one of my heroes, Stephen J. Cannell, the man who wrote nearly every episode of The Rockford Files, the famous, the greatest ever TV series. Oh, he oh, says, really his, his, his clue to writing is, he says that when you're writing a crime novel, ask yourself all the way through, what's the bad guy doing? Yeah. Because if you know what the bad guy's doing, you know what everybody else is doing because they're trying to find it. The only trouble is, if you don't know who the bad guy is when, you, when you're halfway through, because um, I don't plot either. Um, and I can get to 40,000 words and not know the ending at all. Um, so uh, uh, while I admired Stephen Jay a great deal, if you don't know who the bad guy is, it's a little different. <laughs> but what's the name? I can't remember a Christian name. Um, Cornwall, who writes the Case Garpetta stories, you know, the American writer. Christian. I mean, she yeah. was on uh, Woman's Hour or something on Radio 4. And, she, and they said, how's it going? And she said, I have no idea. I've got the ending about 20 pages off and I still don't know who did it. <laughs> and I thought, oh, fantastic. I thought, what a really That's great. I know. Great, isn't it? When, great, when others yeah. can't do it either. It's marvellous. I mean, I, I once wrote a book and um, about three quarters of the way through, I suddenly worked out who the killer was. And I thought, oh, of course. He was there in the back of my mind all the time. But then I thought, but he, I haven't told the readers about him yet. So I had to go back and <laughs> subtly insert him, at, you know, sort of um, a lot further earlier in the book, because that was so unfair. Otherwise, you can't have a killer who nobody knows about till three quarters of the way through. Yeah, but uh, but I don't nobody noticed, which is actually very reassuring. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so, yeah, how do we get on to this? So, I think we've gone a long way from the question. Possibly. We, we do have a couple more questions. So yeah. this one is from Alison Hartland. And she asks, what are the top three common issues to most new writers' manuscripts? <laughs> oh. Right. Um... Well, I mean, talk, speaking for myself, when I was a new writer, you wrote too much, had too many characters, and um, 
there was a large amount of incoherence and, and in my case far too much pretentiousness yeah too many adjectives yeah um and also remember that it's the remember alice in wonderland you know she when she's up at um She's in front of the, 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 is it the white king or the white queen at the end who, when she's on trial and, and it, it, the, the king or the queen says to her, um, right, tell us, tell us, tell us what's, what, what, what your story is. And she says, uh, I don't know where to begin. And he says, begin at the beginning, go on until you come to the end and then stop. That's what writing is, yeah? And the common thing is that people begin at the beginning and then they ramble and then, and, 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 and then, and then they, 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 they they have this kind of overfloweriness that goes on and they stray from the story and you need to stick with the story and you need to find an ending. Um, those are, and, and th th those are quite common on people who start common um, faults with, with, with early writers who, who haven't figured out the discipline of getting from one to, dif from one to two to three. Um, that, that's a kind of uh, something that needs attention always. Now I used to say that, Writing is a bit like disciplined daydreaming in that you you knew that you had it all in your mind. You were going through it and going through it. But the, the discipline is absolutely everything, because otherwise you'll end up with the wrong character in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And also you don't have to write 450 pages, you know. Um, I do. It, well, Steve does. Yeah, we have to stop him. Um, but, but, you know, uh, what, 80,000 words is, is about 300 pages. Um, and if you can't tell your story in 300 pages, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. No. Eric Ambler never had a book that was any longer than 200, 200 pages, and he was one of the greatest in the trade. Told Same with Raymond Chandler. I think it's, a, it's about finding a voice as well and making sure there is a voice there. Um, and, you know, and a lot of uh, new, I, I mean, I do it as well, which is awful. I use far too many adjectives. And, you know, my, my favourite editor's note was, was very simply after the, after the second time when I still had too many adjectives, it was just a, a little note on the side saying "meh," <laughs> which which I think sort of says it all really. <laughs> I got I got a note from an editor that one line who said, um, "Who gives a toss?" <laughs> Perfect. Okay, next question. Uh, so this one is from Move More Fitness. And they said that they're from Brecon, but they've set their novel in Oxford because street names are easier for non-Welsh speakers. Yeah. Uh, they ask, do you think setting a book in Wales limits audiences due to things like Welsh street names? No. No. No, no, no. Not at all. Look at Alice's no, book. No, that's, that's daft. Yeah. Alice's mm. books and oh, there's so many brilliant Welsh. I, mean, I just I absolutely couldn't disagree. Yeah. Besides, you can still call a street Market Street in Aberystwyth if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Or not even name them. I mean, you know, I mean, Brecon is such a fabulous place to set something. Brecon's great. I love, I love Brecon. We yeah. we filmed there, Phil. Remember with the uh, yes. with the uh, with, with with the uh, fairground story. No. Yes, I do. So that's the resounding. Uh, no. <laughs> that way, I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's probably set your book where you want to, where, where yeah. you feel your heart is it, it's a good place to, to set it. I mean, Oxford's lovely. I mean, uh, you know, you keep running into Morse possibly, but it's a lovely. Um, but, um, I mean, Wales is such a glorious place with yeah. such wonderful history in that. And, yes, you don't need to use the really complicated street names. I mean... For heaven's sake, um, my father grew up in East Street. You can't get, you know, I never found out where West Street was, mind you, which was an <laughs> interesting thing. So I think it's write it where you feel that it belongs and you yeah, belong. Yeah, and if you know your world and the story is a universal story, then, you know, it works wherever. And Wales is a fantastic place to set stories. And they, they've they actually got a fantastic... <laughs> Okay, so we have a couple more minutes uh, and two more questions. Um, so this one is from Nick Morrish, who oh, said- Nick, yeah. Hello, <laughs> Nick. Hello, Nick. Hi, Nick. <laughs> he says, the description for this event calls Diamond Crime an e-publisher. Do you plan to produce print books as well at some point? 
yeah, we, we are we are actually producing print books, and um, we're we're starting out with um, we're essentially with publish on demand, but we do have print copies of all the books, um, and the books will be available and being released and released as print copies, as we as we establish our uh, our, our our position. I mean, to be honest, it was the ebooks. We thought it was simple, direct, and slightly different, but then it is so easy to do print on demand publishing. I mean, you know, publishing the ebooks is much more complicated. But uh, so we, we thought, let's go ahead and do it. Brilliant. Um, there's another question from Michelle who asks, will you be publishing books that are set in Canada or the US? Oh, lovely. Uh, well, providing we have a writer who's Canadian or Australian. I mean, Phil, 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 Phil has a Canadian um, uh, dual, nation dual nationality, I think. Um, but no, I mean, if we get, if we get a book from, from America that we love, the pieces we, we, we publish it i mean Absolutely. anywhere australia guatemala mexico wherever really. um i mean it depends on if the story's damn good doesn't matter where it's set really well i think can i just qualify that slightly in the sense that actually guatemala would be quite difficult because none of us could tell <laughs> whether or not it was accurate because i know i don't think i i've never been to guatemala but i think between us we probably all know the states and i don't know yeah we do no, relatively well yeah. but yeah that's wonderful no, I mean, it, all, all people, all people of colours, races and creeds and nationalities are welcome. Brilliant. And then the final question then, and I'll, I will uh, leave you in, in Carol's capable hands again. <laughs> um, this is from Jane Copsey, who's asking, how many books a year do you plan to publish or haven't you decided yet? Well, I, I think, you know, we're looking to to get... By the end of year one, we're looking to get 12 authors up and running. Is that so, 12, 12 more than we've got now or 12 plus ourselves, which are, which are is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, that's 16, is that right? 16. Yeah, so 16, by, 16 by the end, end of the first year. Um, you know, and, and with, each, with each book published, so that would be 16. And Brilliant. will that be going up a bit, do you think, Phil? Has the, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Hi, Jane. <laughs> That's right. I know Jane. <laughs> Fantastic. I will leave you in Carol's capable hands. Those have been your audience questions. Take care, everybody. Really? Thank you so Thank much, you. Amy. You've been Thank you. fabulous. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. All right. So that's it, guys. We've done it. First, um, first one, that was Diamond Crime. So... Now well, thank you, thank you, Carol, for um, kicking us up the bum and making us get keep to the point. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well, thank you for reminding me about the Welsh question. How I, I mean, that was I was so fascinated by it all that I've, I forgot. So, so yes, we we did okay there. I think. Thank you very much indeed, Jeff. Are we off there? Right, and, and you, you, I think you mute yourselves as um, uh, or take yourself off as I say goodbye, and then, yeah. um, then the audience will know we've gone okay <laughs> goodbye then thank you audience out there we can't see you but we appreciate you <laughs> so, thank you very much thank you very much goodbye bye-bye thank you phil thank you steve